I think I'm going to go live real quick <clears throat> before you walk the door, before I forget. So we're here in quarantine. Oh, nobody's even in the building. Oh, yeah, here goes somebody. So yeah, I'm here in quarantine. And, you know, I said I'm going to come through every day, get more of a connection with everybody. I got a lot to talk about, a lot to promote, you know. So we here. Slip a game is tight. Look like at a little slip a game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, my slip again. Got Dusko's in the building. What's up, Dusko? So you know, checking back in. Wondering did anybody see? You know, my first original television series off Dame Dash Studios. Like you know, like how Netflix has its own original programming. So do we. So I was wondering if anybody checked that out. I'm real proud of it. I worked really hard. You know, I'm being an, an, an artist now. You know, I know I've talked a lot about my philosophies and, you know, the way perspective and mentality. <coughs> I do. But at the end of the day, I'm an artist and I'm embracing that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a director and I force myself to write, even though I'm lazy about it, but I'm about to get on my writing game while I have this time. And I pay for it and I produce it and then I find a way to put it out. And I cast it, and I give people opportunity. I don't want to get in such bad service. So, you know, I just feel like I try to lead by example. So, you know, I'm a guy that believes in myself, and I have dreams, and I'm willing to put all my money into those dreams. And regardless of what, I never feel broke because I'm living my dreams, and that's what I'm invested in. And most of my dreams involve making other people's dreams come true. So, you know, that's why things always work out because I also know how to love others as well as myself. You know, a lot of times, you know, loving others before I love myself. And that's really what being a boss of a business is. It's like being a dad in the family. Your children eat before you do. You know, the business has to eat before you do. They have to eat first. And, you know, if I, my child has a problem, then it's my problem. So anyone in, in my business that has a problem, that their problems become my problem, you know? And as a dad, if, if my children are having a problem, it's my job to help them fix them. And if they won't fix them, I'll fix them for them, you know? And it's the same thing with your business. You can't just let your business have an issue and just leave it like that. So the responsibility of being a boss means worrying about way more than yourself. And if you ever believe that being a boss means only worrying about yourself and that things become easier then you're not a boss. Because what happens with a boss is things get more difficult, you're a boss because you can figure shit out. Because you can stay calm under pressure. And you could also always make sure the people around you eat. See, a lot of people don't understand what that kind of responsibility is. Not only for you to make money, but to make money for every single person around you. And again, it's not that big a deal. But a lot of people just don't understand, you know, that perspective, that way of thinking. But again, I'm back to being a creative. I'm a creative and I'm loving it. I'm loving making music, black guns. I'm having mad fun being a rock star. I'm having mad fun acting. I'm having mad fun acting with my girl. Let's leave what my girl is doing right now. Where's Rocky? You're supposed to walk the dog. I don't know what she's doing. Check her out. I love, love this piece right here. <sighs> Ready? I, I thought you said you wanted to walk the dog. I did. But you're doing yoga. I'm putting my mask on. Oh, okay. That's cool. I don't mind. Beautiful. It's Rocky and me doing yoga. I've been waiting for it. I wanted, we were supposed to walk the dog. That's the one thing we can still do is walk the dog outside. Nobody outside. So we're just going to go do that. Nicolette's been working making sure the block is clicking, that we got the workout. And we're doing some real interesting things. This Friday, I got an ill surprise that's gonna happen in the gallery. I don't even know if I can even talk about it yet. But, you know, we will be doing things in a very safe way and still providing new content because we're set up that way, you know? So, like, when everyone's home, the way my business is set up intentionally is I can still hit everybody with work from home. The block can still click. You know what I'm saying? And that's important. 
then you could never think that something like this won't happen. You always have to be somewhat prepared for it. I'm a little underprepared for it because I've been investing in other things. So after a situation like this, it definitely makes me start rethinking my recklessness for sure. Because you do want to have something when uh, something like this happens. You should be able to jump on a jet and get up out of there. And right now, I can't do that. And I don't like that. You know what I mean? But um, I'm sure if I needed to, I could. You know what I'm saying? But again, when every dollar goes to a camera or a lens or, a, um, you know, an editor. You know, every I can't do nothing on my own. You always have to have a team, you know? And... If your team's not on the same sheet of paper, like, that's why with my team, I'd be like, yo, please don't come work with me for money. Work with me because your dream, you got a dream, and, and I, you help me make my dream come true. I can help you make your dream come true. But if you don't have a dream, it ain't really no reason to be over here because that's all we do is we want to make dreams come true. That's why it was a, a must that Nicolette do an album and we do a TV show because that's her dream, and she's good at what she does, and she supported so many people. So... If I do invest in somebody right now, I'm only investing in people that I see that invest in other people. Because selfish people, when you invest in them, they don't invest back. So I wouldn't advise it. You know what I mean? For real. Thank you. I appreciate that. Someone said they love my whole life unconditionally. I appreciate that. You know? All right. What's up, y'all? All right, big shout out to your clothing brand. Um, so what I've been doing is I'm writing the next couple of episodes, and I got some ill shit. I can't wait to shoot this shit. I really can't. You're welcome. Uh, for your, the person said thank you for helping with your blood sugar. Are in for life. Um, thank you for the shit. Yes, my shades are always prescription. I don't be stunting. I always got some medicine in my shades. I really do. Let's see if I don't know if you can see. That's how life looks in, through my lens. Yeah. I like things rosy today. I want to see red, rosy. You know what I mean? So I'm still waiting for Rocky to come so I can go walk the dog. The dog is chilling. You guys are bored. What y'all bored about? This is my board meeting. I'm having a board meeting with the dogs. You feel me? Y'all see everybody? I'm talking to the live, y'all. Dogs is bored. So, uh, yeah, we have other series coming out. Um, Nick at Night is a TV show that's coming out. Uh, Therapy is coming out, which is about the album. We got um, Healing is Gangster. The whole series is coming out. Big shout to Taj. We have... Um, the Yacht Squad, you know, Sunday Sunday uh, concert. And Bishop's always dropping jewels. Big shout to Do It All as well for bringing us together. Um, <laughs> we, got, uh, we got Billy Carson, Forbidden Knowledge. And his shit gets deep and we're developing some old Star Wars shit. I can't wait to drop that on y'all. And uh, we got Health as well, Raquel. She gets like a, she has like a whole network full of yoga. And then we got America New, just appreciating beautiful women in a very artful, tasteful way. You know, a lot of it is shot by Raquel. She is dope. Um, we got We Went To. That's like our Anthony Bourdain. Run around the world, get high, make music with cool people, trying to find like-minded. She went to like Thailand, Jamaica, China. We went all around. We had a ball. Uh, we did that a couple of years ago. Well, recently, we just went to Hawaii, so that was cool. We did it. We went to out there. Um, and uh, so much other stuff, you know? A whole lot. A whole lot. So we're just developing franchises, really. So everything you're seeing now, you know, it's almost like I don't want to call it a pilot, but those first episodes, you know, those will be the worst episodes. Everything's going to get better, even though it's dope. Like, I'm really proud of everything that we've been doing. You know, you got Tori Hart and Memphis Will, and they're, they're, they're hilarious. They're pretty funny. Um, Elizabeth is in, uh, in uh, Elizabeth is in uh, Dress to Kill as well, Tori. You know, young Charlie, he's in there from Harlem, the Queen of Harlem's son. I guess that makes him the Prince of Harlem, right? Pause. And uh, 
and uh, you know, it's cracking. And we making music, we showing live performances. I'm gonna just let off some, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show y'all some shit we've been shooting because people can't go out for a little while, right? They can't go to shows. So we gotta continue to give them, like music is, the, it, it, it cures anything that's bothering your soul. You know, that's why music always thrives somewhat in a recession because it gives you that escape. I know what it does for me. So the world, I think, needs music. You know, live music is so important to me. I love looking, I love watching live instruments. And, you know, that's the appreciation I have for, for live instruments is the appreciation I'm trying to bring to hip hop. That's why I've been doing these projects that involve complete live instrumentation. And I love hip hop, but I just love looking, I like instruments, you know. And I think uh, if we had more interesting shows, it would stimulate the, uh, you know, more people going to shows and festivals and shit like that. But now, people can't even, a lot of people can't be in one place. I'm wondering what everyone's going to do that was supposed to be touring. This is tour season. You know, you got to be prepared for shit like that. So I guess you got to kind of like tour from your house or learn how to be doing performances, you know, in safe places. And people could, you know, get the information from safe places. At least I think for a good nine months, it seemed like. I don't think it's going to get back, like, I think, because what happened in Hong Kong was it went down and everybody got laxed and then people came that left Hong Kong because they thought they were going to get sick, came back sick and got more people sick again. So I can imagine that people, as soon as they think they could go outside, they're going to be running around reckless and then there'll just be a bump up and then we'll have things under control. I feel like there'll be more tests. Are you ready? That's that yoga, yoga, yoga. And uh, the dog is following me. Why are you following me around? That's my girl. She's like, looking like a big wolf, right? And um, so I feel like May, and then you stay in a little, you know, I'll still be ginger. Maybe till like oh, July, August. You feel me? And by the time I have a medicine or a serum, a big shout out to anybody that's fighting this thing. And everybody, please stay safe. And right now is the time to just be responsible. You ain't worried about you. Worry about the people you love and what you can bring home to them. So don't go outside. It don't make no sense. I'm chilling. I ain't going to lie. I've been enjoying this. It's like a little vacation. You know what I'm saying? We open up the country sooner than months. It's not enough time. See, the thing I'm afraid of is everyone's so afraid that the economy is going to fail. that They're like, nah, go back outside because that's what's going on right now. And, you know, no one could agree on that stimulus package to save everybody because they want to make sure small businesses uh, get it before the big businesses, or at least it's fair. So, you know, that's what's happening right now. But it's going to have to be a bailout, you know, because a lot of this is because of poor governing. You know, we should have had those tests. You know what I mean? And all that shit that got dismantled that Obama had, he had an army ready for this, but homie dismantled it, from what I understand. You know what I mean? Big shout out to Congressman Carson and Senator Eddie Milton, you know, the guys that are passing laws and fighting for us every day to the extent that they might get sick. Senators is getting sick right now, you know. And that's another thing is you can't vote because you can't vote. that You got to be there to vote. So they don't have a system where you can vote off site. You got to be there. I was like, man, you might want to get the voter to sit the same people that they use for elections to do that shit from the house or something. Shit, shit got to go on. Like, I mean... You know what I mean? Kiss me there, thank you. Uh, somebody asked, yeah. Boeing was doing buybacks and now they want money. I mean, bro, they shut down. Imagine the hotels, hotels, clubs, airplane, vacations, cruise ships, movie theaters. Like, food is still going to go for now, you know, because you could get takeout. It's not going to be as good, but people still going to be able to buy food. But the shit that's not necessity, that what people are depending on, like entertainment, is it dependent on people gathering in crowds daily? I don't know how they're going to take it. Liquor's going to go up, though. People definitely buying that liquor. You know, probably weed, too. You know what I mean? Paper soldiers, too. Yeah, I got to catch Kevin. we will do it. I might do it without them, but I'll do it. Huh? Oh, see, but she's been following you around. You know, it's kind of chilly out there. You want to put on the pants? Mm, I don't need to get sick. I'm scaring everybody up. Stay warm.
If I was in the stock game while they're down, I would definitely buy them because I feel like they're going to go back up. It's just a matter of a win. If you got cash, then you can sustain. Yeah, that's what I would do. That's so be chilling. So what's up, man? You see yourself? Y'all don't come over here, grumpy. Look at your man. Now they want to fight. Don't fight. I'm not playing with y'all. Go somewhere. Thank you. Uh, Mastermind Queez, he said Honor Up was a great movie. Thank you. And that's another thing. That was another original movie that we did independently, put it out in theaters, came out, distributed through Lionsgate, and now we can show it on our streaming service. You know, I'll start licensing it to the HBOs and the Showtimes of the world very soon. But I just feel like, you know, I want to showcase things on my platform first. You know what I mean? And why not? And, you know, I'm not worried about right now you know, hitting the masses, I just want to talk to the people that are checking for me, you know, because I know they're going to tell everybody. But by the time everybody gets here, I'll have shit clicking. I'll have things rocking. Oh, you want to be my twin? It's my little man right now. I'm wearing your hoodie. You're looking for it. I wasn't looking for it, even though I got, I got this one. We're going out like twins, you know. It's the love boat over here. That's how we do. Amen. <laughs> I could dig it. If I, well, I think it's going to happen with the hotels. Is there's no place, like if the hospitals is too filled up or people need to be quarantined, I'd be like, bro, send them to Disneyland, man. You know what I mean? So people at least be comfortable to have their own hotel room or something instead of a hospital. You know? They can let you come in? Yeah. All right. So we all going to go for a walk. I think I'm going to roll one up before we go. Might as well. It's good to get some exercise. The dogs, you know, they get tired. <coughs> they loving it. They loving the quarantine. They love us in the house all day. I ain't gonna lie. They love that shit. All right. Up. So, like I said, big shout out to everybody. Staying safe. Staying conscious. Staying busy. Not looking at this as a bad situation. I mean, I know if someone is affected by it, yeah, it's a bad situation. But if you're healthy and you're staying out the way and you're being, you know, responsible, then don't look at it as a bad situation. Look at it as a time to regroup, to think about how to approach things. You know, you can't be great without challenges. You know, how else can you show you thorough if nothing thorough happens? So whenever something happens that's challenging, I'm like, now it's time to showcase all that shit I be talking. You know, it's like someone saying they can fight, and then when it's time to fight, they get scared. You know, when you say you can fight and you like fighting, when it's time to fight, you should be like, let's go. Let's get it. You know what I mean? That's how I see it. So, you know, I'm always looking for the smoke because I'm always challenging. I got big dreams. And big, dream, big dreams come with a fight. So I'm always expecting the smoke. But when I see everybody going through the smoke, I'll be like, damn, how's everybody going to deal with it? You know what I mean? Because I got to deal with that smoke every day. But the smoke I deal with is self-chosen because, like I said, I know what dreams I'm fighting for and I know who's trying to take them from me. You know what I mean? I know who's trying to take them from me. But either way, either way, you know, we're going to win. And that's just how I see it. There's no other way. There is no other way. I might lose a battle, but I'm going to win the war. And I feel that way wholeheartedly, confidently. You know, so when, when I see something that looks like it's bad, I'm like, oh, it must be some good shit about to happen. Let me just find it. Let me fight. Let me fight fair. Let me give 100. Let me pass that test and then reap the benefits of the fight. Because that's usually what happens. But see, the thing is, once you win one war, you want a bigger war. So I've won a lot of wars, so I've been just looking for the bigger war, the bigger war. And it's always fair. I like to fight fair. Once people start cheating, I'm out. Because you can't, I don't want to cheat to win because it's not a real win. So that's if you notice, when I be exiting, it be like, oh, niggas is cheating? I'm out. I can't beat you if you're cheating, because I don't cheat. So now we playing a different game. See, a game where people cheat means who could cheat the best. That ain't the game I want to play. I want to say, who, who, I wanna say, who's the best? Who fights the fairest, the hardest? That's the winner of the game. You know what I'm saying? To me. That's how I see things. You know what I mean? That's 100% how I see things. So, for me, it's not just about the fight. It's about a fair fight. And you can't win if you cheat. Even if it looks like you won, you lost because you cheated. And even if nobody knows you cheated, you know you cheated. 
You know you cheated. It's not a W. It's not a W when you cheat. <laughs> Never a W when you cheat. Even if it looks like a W, it's not a W. You can't hide from yourself. And if you're more worried about what people think about you than what you think about you, then you need to get your life together. You know, that's the way I see things. You know? Period. And that's basically the point of view of the television network, man. You know? No cheating. It's about the truth. And the funny shit is people be trying to come around the network and be trying to cheat. And every time I catch somebody cheating, they say I'm the cheater. And that shit be bugging me out. How the fuck I'm cheating in my own game? I made the game. It's my house. I'm not cheating. I ain't got to cheat. You know? It's not a W. Not a W. If you cheat. So anyway, now I'm the late one. You know? She probably went downstairs already with the dogs. You feel me? That's what she probably did. I feel like this might cut off when I walk out, but maybe it won't. Let's see what happens. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Yep, they left me. Oh, yeah, if I go down there, I think about bad connection. All right, so I'm going to check back in later. Check Dame Dash Studios. Check the content. Thank you. Oh, that's a girl. Also. Yeah, if it's raining, I'm not going out. But thanks for uh, kicking in with me for a little while. I appreciate it. Oh, but Strand's always OG. I was, that's that King Desco. It's not King Desco. I'm not going to front, but um, I ain't got on that right now. But it's definitely OG. It's definitely OG. All right. All right, y'all. Thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for hollering at me. Thanks for listening. Shout out to Oklahoma. I see a shout out there. You know, Tracy Lee. That's the rapper, Tracy Lee? No. I don't know who that is. Anyway. Yeah, there should be some free. Like Harlem in the building. Easy vegan. Yeah. All right. Appreciate that. The goat thing. I appreciate that. Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah, if we get, if we get, let me see, because I think we might, might come over here. Like, yeah, we're going to put the sneakers on. Like, we're going to let us put sneakers, sneakers in the house. So, <clears throat> slip it so we get here. Walk on now. Mm-hmm. Work out room. Well, work out. I'm outside. We are like, let's see where they go. Let's see. Matter of fact, I'm going add this. They all the way over there with the dog. They just left me. They over there walking the dog. Oh.